Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Alvin here and today I have another tips and exploratory video for you on how to be as efficient as possible with Cubase and this time it's with the retrospective MIDI recording feature. It will save you a ton of time and it will help with anyone who has anxiety when you are hitting the record button and uh, you know you have to perform and play MIDI notes as best as you can. So without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. So we are going to look at something that's called a retrospective recording, which is a feature that's been uh, recently enhanced. I'm not sure how far back this goes, but I know in 10.5, they enhanced it with some more cool features here, uh, like insert as linear recording and cycle recording. And we'll go through a little bit more about what that means. I'm just going to click this empty retrospective record buffer, which should be the default as soon as you load a new VST like this. So I've got Keyscape loaded up here. It sounds lovely, something like this. So you see that as soon as I play a few notes here, retrospective recording starts sliding up. And if I press Shift and Numpad Star, it will automatically uh, copy in everything that it has been recording in the background that uh, you might not have realized has been happening. So let's just make sure it sounds like what I just played. Okay, so yeah, it's there. So that's super, super handy. And we can do a bunch of things workflow wise with this and uh, even use it uh, later on with uh, loops. I, I don't know about you, but, uh, but I used to be very, um, anxious whenever I hit the click track or whenever I hit the record button or even just, you know, recording YouTube videos here, like hitting the record button. Anytime the record is on, you get that, that anxiety. So with retrospective recording, you kind of take away all that pressure, albeit might be psychological, but I'll show you what I mean. So let's say in the past, uh, or maybe you're doing this right now, you might be doing something like this. So I've got my metronome going. Um, I'm just going to hit the record. I see that it's starting to light up. I got to wait for the timing and then I start playing and then I totally mess up and then I stop and then um, I would have to, you know, delete that track or that MIDI event clip and uh, do it all over again. And then I try and then the anxiety builds up. And then, nope, didn't like that either. And then maybe this time uh, I would use a, you know, command Z or control Z here to remove that track. And then I'll, you know what I mean? If that is you and you have a bit of anxiety, sometimes you might just want to just freely jam. This is a good way to go in that uh, you can just, I'm just going to un uh, solo that track. And let's say I have a whole bunch of backing tracks here and I'm just going to just play through this and uh, no pressure of recording. I'm just hitting enter. All right, maybe I screwed up at the end there. So no harm, no foul. Let's do this again. So I'm just playing. Okay, I hit space bar and now I'm pressing shift star on my numpad and voila, I have what I just played uh, recorded in there. There we go. So I like that take, you know, maybe I'll adjust a little bit and uh, boom. You can go and over and over again as much as you want and you'll finally get the one you want. And all you have to do is press shift and numpad star there and get it back. So there are um, some hotkeys that you can also use to make your life ev even easier. So if you don't like to use a, a shift and a, a numpad star there, or you have a 10 keyless keyboard, you can just go into your key commands here and search a retrospective. And there you go. There's a few options here. So this is the default one that Cubase maps to shift num star. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'll map the uh, insert track and 
as linear recording, and I'll map that to the letter R. I don't usually care for the R to uh, uh, en enable and, and disable the record enable. Uh, I usually just use my mouse, or by default, it's already automatically uh, enabled. So I use that letter R, and it's super fast, just one letter, and I get what I need. So let's go over the difference between the track input as cycle recording versus track input as linear recording. Let's get into that right now. Okay, so let's say we have a four bar loop here and we just want to play through and try out a few things and it's just gonna uh, go on and on and on a few times. So maybe let's do uh, three iterations of this loop and start jamming and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I just stopped it there with a hitting space bar. So now we have a few options after we've recorded those three, I think maybe four iterations uh, since I left that little bit at the end there uh, as it restarted over the fourth time. But if I hit insert as linear recording here, you'll see that the entire time I was playing, everything's been recorded and it's just sped it all out over uh, 12, bars I guess so let's say we don't want that but anyway just I'll play it through a little bit just to let you know that it did record everything that we played earlier that was the first loop okay that was the second loop and so on and so forth so let's say we don't want it all in one continuous linear mode watch this this is the cool part so if you hit insert as cycle recording uh, you'll see here that these are every iteration that we went through and it's all laid out here in a drop down list for you. So I'll hit the first one here. If you recall, this is what I did. Okay, and I can move on to the second. Okay, if I don't like that, I can move on to the third. Okay, so so on and so forth. This fourth one here, you might be wondering, I don't remember that, but yeah, it was actually at the very end. Uh, I didn't hit stop fast enough, so it actually tried to loop and, and play the fourth time. So there you go. You have all the, the different entries here, all stacked on top of one another. So if I just drag them over here, uh, you can pick and choose and, and do what you want. So yeah, that is linear versus cycle recording. So in the usual circumstance of, let's say, uh, a very, you know, more linear, not so cyclical, loopy um, uh, example for orchestral scores or if you're writing a score to, to film or something like that, you can use the same kind of technique here and I'm just gonna hit uh, solo. So if you're just, don't want the pressure of the clicks or anything like that, you can just hit enter, start recording, watch your film. Maybe uh, that take was horrendous. You start all over again, no harm, no foul. Just hit enter again, start playing. Okay, so let's say you really like that one. Again, you can shift numpad star or like what I did, I mapped it to the linear um, input there and I just hit the, my letter R as a hotkey. Okay, well, there you have it. I hope that tip really helps you out and you can move really fast. You can keep auditioning um, all your composition and as much as you want. And then when you really like something, you hit the <laughs> R button. In my case, that I mapped a hotkey. You can press the shift uh, numpad star. If you are working with loops, you can use that uh, method here where you insert 
a cycle recording and uh, you can get all the different options of what you just played through. All right. Well, I hope that was valuable for you and you will be able to take that and uh, speed up your workflow uh, significantly and remove that pressure of the click track or in hitting the record and to also not have to constantly go back and deleting what you just recorded and uh, wasting a whole bunch of clicks and time. Uh, this all should add up over months and years. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. You can buy me a coffee at some point that I saved you a bunch of labor. Um, all right, that'll do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot and uh, have a great rest of the week.